step for our mill project and that is applying the bevel. Um, I've got our finished work piece here. Um, the bevel is this um, pointed portion here. Our current state of things are, is this. So we're going to go ahead and talk about how to apply this, apply this bevel. So let's take a look at the plans and get some idea of what kind of dimensions we're talking about. So you can see the bevel over here on the right and that tells us that this bevel is 60 degrees. Now we are not going to be tilting the head or the ram or doing anything like that crazy with the the mill. We're going to end up manipulating the workpiece and holding the workpiece at an angle to go ahead and get that. So that 60 degree number is important because what we're going to do is we're going to take the workpiece and we're going to lay it down on an angle like this and the mill cutter or the end mill will come across the top and clean all that up. So that 60 degrees here, because I'm a math wizard, I know that translate to an, an, ter, translates excuse me, to an angle of 30 degrees that we need to hold this piece at while it's in the vise. So <clears throat> to do that, right, we're going to have a couple different setups. But before we get to setups, we need to talk about figuring out how much do I physically need to cut in order to center that bevel on my workpiece. Okay? Right now you're looking at a profile picture of our workpiece. Let's do that. Okay, so that's our workpiece on edge. The right hand photo or picture is the workpiece with the bevel drawn in. Now I know that I need to hold this at a 30 degree angle. Okay? And I'm going to need to use some trigonometry here to figure out exactly how far I need to cut from a corner of the workpiece in to get a flat okay, that will mirror another 30 degree angle to get us 60 degrees included. So a couple things you're going to have to first do. Step number one is determine the thickness of your workpiece currently. And I have measured mine already and I have a thickness of I believe 0.448 or it's not 4.448, 0.897 is my current thickness. Okay, so my thickness is 0.897. All right, now for me to do this math here, I need to figure out okay, a couple of lengths and angles that I can plug into my trig functions to determine my depth of cut when I'm done. So I'm going to break this down in half. Right, and determine that I have 0.4485 okay, from either side of my workpiece to the center, which is where we want the apex of that um, bevel to be. Now, if I take those numbers, and I'm going to explode this a little bit on the next page here, we're going to apply some basic trig to determine how much we need to go ahead and cut. Remember, this is going in on an angle, so my depth of cut is from this corner to a specific length or depth here. Okay? So that is my depth of cut. I know the hypotenuse to be 0.4485, and I know one of my angles is 30 degrees, one of my angles is 90 degrees, and my depth of cut is side B. So I consulted good old chart okay, to determine, given the information I have and what I'm looking for, what formula to use. And that formula is side B equals the cosine of your angle times C, which is the hypotenuse. So I just took that. Side B is cosine 30 times 0.4485. And I just plugged my numbers in and determined that side B is 0.388 inches. That is going to be my depth of cut once I have touched off on my workpiece and hopefully it'll become clear here um, when we do the setup. But there is a little bit of trig to do here. Um, there are other ways to do it but that's a simple easy method that I've used um, to go ahead and 
figure out my depth of cut. So we're going to take a second here, clear the deck. We'll talk about work holding and how we're going to hold this work piece at a, a 30 degree angle so we can come in and cut that bevel. Uh, and then we'll get going with milling the, uh, the bevel. <music> ready to do our setup we already determined that we need to hold or lay our our workpiece down at a 30 degree angle um, relative to the cutter there are a couple different ways to go ahead and do this uh, one pretty common way is the use of what's called a sign bar and I have an example of a sign bar right here now the way a sign bar works is again basic geometry and, and trigonometry here we have two points that are fixed distance from each other. And by changing the, the elevation from one to the other, I can dial in a very, very, very precise angle. Okay. The problem with this is I also, not only do I need to know my angle, but I need to be able to figure out the height of this leg of my triangle. Okay. So that requires me to do a little bit more math. Once I know this though, I can use a series of gauge blocks, okay, all different sizes here, and set this up in my vise with the gauge blocks equaling the height of one leg okay, and the sign bar equaling the hypotenuse. Okay, I can then take my workpiece, place it on the sign bar, and clamp it in my vise. Okay, this is nice because it's totally adjustable. If I've got a 45 degree angle, a 39 and a half degree angle, whatever it may be, I just have to change the height of my gauge blocks and that will alter the angle that my workpiece is held at. So very versatile, very, very accurate. Right? But for our purposes, we're going to go the easy route and we're going to take a pair of parallels that have 30 degree angles on them. Okay, so all we have to do is lay these in the vise, put our workpiece on top, and that will hold it at that 30 degree angle. Now, the setup with these on the vise is a little bit tricky. You almost need three or four hands to do this. Um, I'm going to attempt to do it with just myself, um, and we'll see if we can't um, walk you through getting your workpiece in the vise using those 30 degree parallels. So we'll... Let's reset up here and get back on the mill and we'll show you how to load the workpiece in the vise. Okay, we're ready to go ahead and set up here and put our, our workpiece in the vise. These angle blocks are used exactly the same way as parallels. The only difference is obviously these have um, an angle cut on them. So when we load these up, we want to do a couple things um, that we normally would do with parallels. Make sure they're clean, there's no debris on them. Okay, and we're going to make sure inside the vise Okay, there is no debris inside the vise. So we'll brush this all out. Okay, now setup here is tricky because these don't want to stay in place while you set this up. So my suggestion to you is slide these in and have them run flush or with the edge of the vise. Again, slide the parallel in so we don't get any debris stuck underneath there. Now, you're going to have to lay, gently lay the workpiece on here while kind of keeping these from wanting to squirt out. If I lay this on here, you see they want to push out. Okay, so you're going to have to get them set. Okay, lay the workpiece gently on top and tighten the vise slightly. Just enough so that the workpiece is held in place. Okay, so now my hands are off, but now I can come in and check and make sure my parallels are evenly situated with the edge of the vise. I can look underneath here and make sure that my workpiece is tight to the parallels. This isn't a situation where we're going to want to pound on this. If you pound on this with a hammer to seat this workpiece, you're just going to squirt the, uh, the angle blocks out. So I've got equal on either sides of the vise. I can see visually that the workpiece is set on top of these and now I can snug up my vise a little bit. Okay. I'll snug it, I will check again to make sure nothing is shifted. Okay. And then 
I will continue to snug up the vise, check, okay, and then snug it up. It's important to make sure that these are even at the ends. Okay, if they're skewed, your, your um, workpiece is going to go in crooked and get wedged in the vise. So make sure everything's seating nicely. Once the vise is tight, okay, you can remove these. Okay, or leave them in. It doesn't make any difference, but they are really there. There's literally literally nothing holding them in Okay, because they're wedge wedges, so I'm gonna pull them out Okay, and we'll get ready to go go ahead and cut here in a second. So we'll meet you back in a minute We're all set up and ready to cut. Uh, before we actually make chips here, I want to talk you through how we're going to keep track of how much we're cutting. Um, remember, we calculated our, our depth of cut at 0.388 inches. Um, and rather than me keeping track of almost four full rotations of the knee uh, crank, I'm going to use the Z-axis DRO um, on the quill to go ahead and keep track of that. So what I want to do to start with is make sure that the quill is as high up as it will go. Okay? And then I will lock the quill in place for right now. I am gonna come around now, turn on the machine, and I'm gonna raise the knee until I touch off, at which point then I will zero my Z-axis DRO. You gotta be careful on your touch off here. We're touching off on a corner. We gotta be real slow. If we go too far and we zero too, too far down, it's gonna throw off all our numbers. So I'm gonna come up very slowly and listen to see when I, or hear when I am I'm actually touching off on that corner. Right there. I just touched off. So now I'm going to zero that Z axis DRO. And now every time I change my depth of cut, I'm going to bring the quill down rather than bring the knee up. So we are done working with the knee. Everything is going to come off of this quill now. So we zeroed. And I'm going to bring myself into position for my first cut. And we're basically just going to cut right down the the center or the, the apex of that triangle okay, and I'm going to do so in maybe 30 thousandths of an inch passes so I'll unlock the quill and I'll come down around 30 lock the quill turn the machine on make my pass and I'll just keep going 30 thousandth increments until I get to my 0.388 depth of cut and then we'll chit chat a little bit more here
height. So there we go, stopped at 0.388 depth of cut. You're going to notice too, after a while, you're going to have to do two passes to get the entire width of the, the, um, the bevel. And, and you might also have noticed that at that last pass, I, I only took 10 thousandths to kind of help clean up the surface and give me a little bit better surface finish than what I would um, with a heavier depth of cut. So I'm going to pull this out, flip the part over, get it back in uh, that 30 degree orientation, retouch off, and cut the other side. So let me get my setup going and then we'll finish this bevel. There you have it. We cut the bevel. Okay, we pull this out of here and touch it up with a file. And that should complete the construction of our mill piece. Okay, now, when you pull this out of here, this is incredibly sharp, so please mind yourself. Um, the only thing you got left to do is grab a file and touch up any corners, edges, sharp edges all the way around the part so it's nice and safe to handle. Okay, take off your layout die that might be on there and turn your piece in. You're all done. Thanks for watching.